Good morning to Komonu Life Church. Today is Friday, April 22nd, and we are on day seven of the Bible reading plan, reading Galatians with Charles Spurgeon. And today we are tasked with reading uh, chapter three, verses 10 through 26. Uh, but let's be honest, that is a lot of scripture to read this morning. And so for the sake of time and your attention span, my attention span, uh, let's just go ahead and look at verses 10 to 14. And that's what we will be studying during our time together. But I think it's important that you uh, read 10 all the way to 26 and, and just really reflect on that because it says a lot of great things that pertains to uh, our faith and it's the way that we live life. All right. So make sure you do that. But for our time, let's go ahead and look at verse 10 to 14. And this is what Paul continues to write in the church to the church in Galatia. He says, For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not of faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. And so Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. It is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Amen. And so Paul continues to talk about the difference between faith and the law. And yesterday, we looked at the beginning of chapter 3 with Pastor Lee, where Paul asked, How did you receive the Holy Spirit? With the obvious answer, because of faith, not the law. The emphasis that we see, uh, especially when it comes to Paul, uh, really just uh, being fully devoted to the gospel, is the emphasis that is put on faith and who it is placed in and what that does or what that should do for our lives and our living. And so this morning, Paul quotes Old Testament scripture by referencing that everyone is cursed who does not abide by all the things written in the law. And it basically, right, live them out flawlessly. And honestly speaking, that is practically impossible. I mean, we can try and we might even be successful at it for maybe a moment in time. But the reality of the situation is when it comes to that requirement, we will all fail repeatedly. But the saving grace in the honest, in that honest reality is what Paul says here in verse 11. The righteous shall live by faith, not the law, right? Live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. And if you've been paying attention since we've started this study in Galatians, the problem the church in Galatia is facing is that they are actually straying away from the foundation of the gospel, the gospel truths in exchange for quote unquote other gospels. They are becoming less reliant on the completed work of Christ and thinking that they need to do something more to keep their salvation, if that makes sense, keep them in salvation, right? If that makes sense. And reverting back to the law isn't the answer, right? Why would they think, or why why would they think that it would be a good idea? I, mean, I, I honestly don't know. It kind of feels like maybe bias remorse, because why would you want to revert to the law when you have Jesus? Right? It's like, why would you want to, why would you feel like you have to do something else when you've been given the greatest gift of all? In verse 13, Paul says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Right? We don't need to depend on the law or try to uphold the law in terms of salvation. We're not going to earn our way into heaven. I think the law is great, right? It's a great moral compass that points us to Christ. It's a, it's a great uh, tool for us to understand our need for Christ, but the law cannot save us. It can help shape us, but it cannot save us. You see, Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Jesus' redemption isn't about rescuing us, right? He paid the price to rescue us. Jesus bought us out from under the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. 
And Martin Luther kind of says, he, Martin Luther says this in, in light of that. He says, whatever sins I, you, all of us have committed or shall commit, they are Christ's sins as if he had committed them himself. Our sins have to be Christ's sins or we shall perish forever. Right? He continues to say that Paul does not say that Christ was made a curse for himself. Right? The accent is on the two words for us. Christ is personally innocent. Right? Personally, he did not deserve to be hanged uh, for any crime of his own doing. But because Christ took the place of others who were sinners, he was hanged like any other transgressor. For you and I, that is why he became cursed. And so this is why we are justified by faith. This is why we aren't bound to the law because of Jesus, right? We've been freed from the curse of the law, right? Jesus died so that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, to those who would choose to put their faith in Jesus. And so let us close our time uh, looking at what Charles Spurgeon has to say. You know me, I like to quote Spurgeon. He has a great, he does a great job of articulating scripture in ways that are harder for me to do. So why try to butcher what he says instead of we can just read what he says directly. But he said, the true gospel is no new thing. It is as old as the hills. It was heard in Eden before man was driven from the garden. And it has since been repeated in sundry ways and in many places even to this day. Oh, that is into Oh, that is iniquity. Antiquity will lead men to venerate, to venerate it, and then to listen to its voice. The gospel blessing, which was thus preached to Abraham and to his seed, came to him by faith. He was justified by faith. The blessing, which is the soul of Abraham's gospel, must come to us in the same way as it did to him, namely by faith. And if we expect to find it in any other way, we will be grievously mistaken. We have been freed from the law. We have been freed from sin. You and I, we are justified by the faith that we have and what Jesus has accomplished for us. And so let us continue to live in that truth today and until Jesus calls us home. Until next time, I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you. May you go in peace. Amen and amen.